Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Philip Tillman. I'm the Managing Director of ACL in Africa. Welcome to our webinar series. I trust you've signed on for the easy approach to continuous auditing, and I look forward to guiding you through a combination of things today. The first of those things I'm going to talk about is how organizations are achieving it using our maturity scale. And secondly, I'm going to show you a presentation around how an organization has moved from what we would call ad hoc auditing to achieving continuous auditing. I'm also going to jump into the software and show you how disruptive software can change the way that organizations perform the audit process. As a first item, what I'd like to do is talk about how organizations achieve greater coverage and how they get to a continuous auditing and for that matter a continuous monitoring program with the use of the right technology. And we're very lucky in that we have in excess of 800 customers using our technology in Africa. And what this graph represents is on the y-axis it talks to the number of tests, which is coverage, one of audit's key objectives. And the first level of maturity that we find for organizations is ad hoc auditing. This supposes that organizations are performing a number of tests that are happening in support of their audit process and that there is some level of automation. That automation might be in the form of Excel, it might be in the form of using an ACL desktop, it might be in the form of somebody who understands SQL, but it is happening albeit the characteristics of ad hoc testing is the ability to only acquire data manually. In other words, an individual would go to IT, ask for some data, and it would be provided sometimes a day, sometimes two weeks later. The downside of this is that because the data isn't being extracted by audit, it is not independent. And one cannot guarantee completeness and therefore the accuracy of the data. But of course, in the modern world, the far majority of an organization's data is in the form of the ERP system capturing almost every transaction that happens. And that leads us to maturity level two, continuous auditing. Now continuous auditing supposes that there's still a level of manual based testing and auditing that needs to happen. Many things can't be tested using analytics, but that much of the organization can be continuously audited. And this presupposes that the audit team have a server which is connected to the data, continually extracting and achieving a greater level of coverage without an additional cost on the human resource level. And therefore, it is independent because audit would have extracted the data directly from the ERP systems themselves. The audit function can talk to completeness and therefore accuracy. And most organizations, whether they are on maturity level one or zero, are looking to get straight into doing continuous auditing. And just to talk to maturity level three for a moment, what we find is that once this is happening in an organization for a period, business get involved and say, well, there's also things that we want to be able to look at. And inevitably, inevitably business has a much wider scope than audit does because they're looking to be able to analyze more things and they are also looking to be able to remediate what has gone wrong. Whereas audit are typically looking for this in the context of their annual audit program for the purpose of signing off control checks. And of course, it is continually performed and is independent because the data is continually independently extracted. And again, completeness and accuracy be, can be achieved. But the goal of this was about increased coverage, increased independence, at a lower cost of being able to achieve that. So whether you're looking as an organization to go to maturity level two, continuous auditing, or maturity level three, continuous monitoring, the right technology is key for achieving that. And today we're very much going to talk about the process of getting to continuous auditing. To discuss us for just a moment, so ACL is a software tool that was, was and continues to be developed in Canada. We represent them as ACL in Africa, and we're very lucky to have done this for, for decades. Um, we're privileged to have in excess of 800 customers on our content, while 
ACL is distributed in more than 140 countries globally. And ACL's mission is to create a world where audit risk and compliance professionals are some of the most sought after people in the organization. And luckily for you, we're audit specialists. We understand that process. We understand the content that's required. We're a technology firm, so we're not a consulting firm that's trying to build man hours. We're looking for you to get value from technology. And more importantly, whether you're in East, West, or Southern Africa, we're local to you. And this talks to some of our customers by way of an example to do that. And as you'll see from this slide, our customers are not specific to an industry because neither governance nor audit is specific to an industry, but it does talk to some of the breadth of industries to which we serve. So in the journey to continuous auditing and monitoring, we're going to be introduced by Alan. Alan today is our auditor, and he is going to be talking us through two steps. The process of him identifying what his problems were, and then the process of him identifying what the solution was, and how ACL solved his problems. So Alan was an incredibly frustrated auditor who used to perform ad hoc testing only. Now he's in the position where he, is, he oversees a continuous auditing program. You can see Alan's a very happy chap. He's got his ACL jacket on and he's got his most sought after badge. We're going to talk to you about how he achieved that. Let's start with the current audit challenges. And in that context, one of the key questions is, what was the audit and assurance function hired to do? And what do they end up doing? And in our experience, the objectives as an audit function is to provide assurance and add value to the business and serve them as their customers. But we find they spend far too much time requesting data from IT. Then they have to import and sort and formalize, analyzing that data and then it's the end of the working day. So they're actually doing what technology has been able to do for some particular time and frequently neglecting their objectives, certainly not maximizing those. And there's, there's three big challenges that Alan says are what was keeping him from achieving a continuous auditing program at the beginning. The first one is independent access to data. Now your organization may well look something like this. On the left, you can see that there's procurement and HR and finance and all the divisions of the organization inputting transactions every day, which is going into the ERP system and the CIO or some IT individual is effectively saying, that's my data, Mr. Audit, keep out. And the audit function is on the outside saying, but I do need access to this data. Our goal is to completely reverse that and we'll show you a bit later how Alan achieved that. But very importantly, no matter who provides the data, it has to be from it has to be independently extracted, okay? no matter how prestigious the individual providing that data is. The second thing that was holding Alan back after realizing he didn't have independent access to his data was he realized that he'd studied either an audit degree or a business degree. And so he was actually the great person for the job, but he was doing the wrong function because Audit requires two sets of skills now. The first one is every audit team must have some kind of a super user function. And their goal is to understand the systems that the organization uses and the database and the tables in which all of that data is being captured. The organization is no longer being audited on a manual basis. The, the ERP system runs the organization. So the audit job is to be able to audit the systems. But on the flip side, the majority of auditors actually just want to get their results. They want to see information in Excel, effectively results files that they can filter and they can follow up with. And so these two very distinct roles are representing increasing diversification that's required in an audit team. And the third big challenge for Alan was having the right technology. If you think about where you've worked, and where you studied in the past, would you say that most auditing is done on a laptop or on a server? And I think you'll come to the conclusion that it's being done on a laptop, which is absurd when you consider the volume of data that's happening. 
This diagram represents the fact that there could be many ERP systems running in your organization. You might have SAP or Oracle or uh, Microsoft, Sage, or some combination of the two. The right technology for an audit function would have a server that was connected directly to each of these ERP systems, independently correct, excuse me, independently connected, downloading 100% of the data running 365 days a year and being system agnostic. And that means audit, for the first time, would have access to every piece of data in the organization based on the audit schedule, not based on when it's convenient from IT to do so. So the third big challenge to overcome was having the correct technology. And so knowing those were Alan's biggest challenges, the solution that we're going to present is Alan, now that he has his ACL jacket and he's one of the organization's most sought after people, Alan's going to walk us through what the solution was. And that's broken down to five components. The first component was to solve the problem of independent access to data. This is what the organization should look like from an audit perspective where audit has direct access to the data. I hope you work for an organization where IT don't try and block you, but in the event that they do, you would then have direct and continuous access to the data. And to that end, ACL have a plethora of standard connectors, whether you're working on SQL or Google BitQuery, whether you're an SAP house or an Oracle house, ACL will be able to connect directly to that data, typically in a very standardized fashion. So we overcome the issue of independent access to data very easily. The next step is to say, well, how often do I want access to the data and how often do I want to be able to schedule my analytics and testing? Now, there are some things that one might want to do on a monthly basis, such as having a, a look at um, payments, as an example. That could be done daily. There could be things like salaries and payroll that one would want to do on a monthly basis. And at the end of the year, perhaps more high-level items, such as journals and looking at conflict of interest in the organization. So the audit function will decide when they choose to get the data, fitting in with the IT protocols, and the audit function will decide how often they want to then perform those test analytics. Now, the third component is to make sure that we're working with 100% of the data. The old way, and the way still pushed forward by many consulting firms who are timesheet based, is to work with samples. Once you have the right technology, the concept of sampling is dead. The only sampling that might occur is when there are so many exceptions that one would sample the exceptions such that you have a manageable workload, but there would be something wrong in every record in that sample. And so now that one can test 100% of the population 100% of the time, you can achieve full data coverage. The third component is to decide the scope of the analysis. And one of Alan's key challenges was to decide what should he be analyzing? Would I take a process-based, risk-based, or perhaps an operational-based view? And our experience of this is that 10% of what any organization manages is unique to it. If you were a supermarket chain, as an example, or a bank, you're similar to the people in your industry, but you probably have your own unique methods and processes. 30% of what gets analyzed is typically specific to an industry. So if I'm a telco, I'm going to go and look at call data records. If I'm in the insurance industry, I would look at claims data, for example. But 60% of what any organization analyzes, we find to be very generic. Every organization buys things, sells things, has stock, has employees, has segregation of duties issues, and therefore, Almost all of these are pretty standard, independent of the industry. And ACL has very cleverly defined a number of best practice analytics in each of these process areas, which I'll cover shortly. So on a high level, from a scope of analysis perspective, we find 40% of what gets analyzed is done on a custom basis and is performed either by the staff to whom we train to the same standards as our own staff, or in fact, you could use ACL and its service team 
to be able to come and write those analytics for you. But 60% of what every organization manages is standard, and therefore these are what are called the ACL essentials, which are standard process-based analytics based on best practice audit procedures. And again, you can see in here things like accounts payable, vendor management, human resources, HR, and so on. Perhaps to show you these in the context of processes, you can see in blue we might have things such as accounts payable, purchase order management, vendor management, which make up the procure to pay process. So while vendor management might be preventive in nature, trying to identify issues in the vendor system before any transaction has taken place, something such as cash disbursements and accounts payable would be retrospective or detective in nature, looking more at the transactional information and less at the master data. Looking at something like hire to retire, the preventive side would typically be your human resource master data testing, and the detective side being the salaries and payroll transactions and checking those for um, any anomalies or exceptions. And so what we find is organizations typically, once they have the base platform, then decide which of the modules they want, there's no point reinventing the wheel, and then decide if there's anything unique to their organization that they want to be able to analyze. And so once Alan has decided what his scope of analysis is going to be, the next question is, who gets the results? If the results go to audit, this becomes a continuous auditing function. If the results go to business, this would become a continuous monitoring function. In the context of today, we're talking about continuous auditing. At the end of this presentation, you will see a link to our continuous monitoring webinar, where you'll be able to go in and find out how business is able to then identify the exceptions, workflow those to the right individuals, such that they can remediate and be ready for the auditors when they come around. But today we're talking about internal audit. And so internal audit, which is of course an on-premise solution, so the data never leaves your environment. You're able to work with that data via Excel, if you want to be extremely detailed, or via visualizations, where you're able to chart and graph and drill down on this kind of information as well. And so I'm now going to go into the software and to show you a couple of ways in which you would be able to interact with it. The first of these ways is the ACL web interface. I say web, but just to clarify, all of the data sits on your premise and is completely in your control. And so here you can see a number of the essentials which I'll use for today's demonstration, such as cash disbursements, human resources, and salaries and payroll. But I'm going to use accounts payable for today's demonstration. And in that, there are a number of visualizations which have already been prepared. I'm going to use a duplicate payments item, and a purchase order analytic, just for context. And so, if I go first of all into test number eight in the accounts payable essentials module, it is an analytic that is looking for purchase orders created after the invoice date. In this case, anything over three months later. And you can see here is a set of results. This is effectively a results table. It looks a little bit like Excel. And what it gives me the ability to do is similar to Excel. I can click on items and I can sort them in ascending or descending, but it will also give me a data distribution and tell me how many of these are belonging to each vendor, as an example. If in the day's difference column, I could also sort descending, so from highest to lowest, and it will show me that here you can see Surf Investments have three invoices which were paid with 189 days difference. But if this is a lot of data, perhaps I would want to visualize this. And so this visualization on the y-axis has the invoice date, and on the x-axis has the purchase order created date. And if I then scroll over Mr. Sparkle as an example, I can see that $454,000, which was invoiced on the 29th of December, but not I didn't have a purchase order, num purchase order detail until March the 11th. I could go and see another bubble in the middle, which is smaller, representing a smaller financial amount, but for Osatu Chemicals. And if I double click on that item, it will then filter or drill me right down just to that item. 
So here you can see Usatu chemicals, you can see the purchase order created date, the invoice date, how many days difference, and as I scroll, scroll across, you can see further information that comes from the source database. So you can see we've extracted the data directly from the ERP system and then present it in an easy to use fashion. The next test I'm going to give as an example is test number two in the Essentials Accounts Payable module, which is duplicate payments. Again, I start with a holistic results table, and on the top right, you can see that I have 874 records. So that's a huge amount, and therefore it would be easier to see my data in a graph. I'm going to look at a pie chart in this case, and I can clearly see there's a couple of large individuals contributing to this. So Robert Hewitt is representing 15%. Um, uh, Kifi Juarez is representing 12%, but Candice Cunningham represents 40% of my exceptions in terms of value. If I double click on Candice, you can see at the top right, she is responsible for 494 of those 874 records. So that's still a huge amount to work with. So I might choose to filter that down further. So I can add a visualization, choose to insert a bar chart, on the x-axis, I would like to see the vendor name, and on the y-axis, I'd like to see the amount she's been paying. And while there are a number of vendors that seem to be duplicate paid by Candice, an outlier appears to be this organization at 1.455 million. And if I double click, it will then drill me right down to that. So you'll recall I clicked on Candice, so it's already filtered by her username, and then I clicked on that organization, so it's clicked on Barco Investments, who have a number of what looks like duplicates. Now, these two are certain duplicates, one can tell in terms of the amount, but this doesn't even have a corresponding amount. And the reason is because we filtered by Candice alone. So if we remove the filter that we had for Candice, and therefore we have only filtered by the vendor name, you can see that there's the other transaction. And if I scroll across, I will be able to see that that other transaction was in fact processed by Robert. So truly, this is an example where the data extraction and the analytic is a given. It happens before we even get to work. It gives me the ability to drill down and analyze this data and represent it any way that I might choose. Now, whether I, as a user, would like to see this in a web view like this, or whether I would like to see it in Excel, is a matter of choice. Here I have an email. ACL is able to automate an email process, maybe every day, week, or month, based on your choice. And in that email, it gives us four tabs. So I'm going to click on that email, and the four tabs represent a summary tab. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here an exceptions tab, and a couple of random samples. So the first tab, for summary, gives us the number of records extracted and the number of exceptions. So this is essentially my completeness and accuracy check. The second tab provides me with my list of exceptions. But it's in an Excel format, not that simple to read, and therefore you can install the ACL Excel add-in. And the ACL Excel add-in is completely free to anybody, and it gives us the ability to convert an Excel file into an ACL mini file. And you can see by doing so, on the right-hand side, it automatically pops up and tells us there's 875 rows, because there's 874 records plus a header, and the data beneath it is blank, but if I click on the payment amount column, the data on the right starts to tell me this is the absolute values, standard deviations, how many positives and negatives, the oldest and the most recent. So it turns this into a file that I can work with. The other two tabs in this case, the first one is if I've got 874 records, it's too much to work through, it will automatically create for me a 25 record sample so that I can now work through these. It will also create a random 25 monetary unit sample for me to work through. And a monetary unit sample, for those who don't know, essentially gives a higher weighting 
to larger values so that you don't end up looking for exceptions in a $1 value. And if I now want to work through my 25 record random sample, I can hit my, my row status so I can add a review column into my Excel document. And I can work through this and say, well, this one I'm awaiting feedback from my client. That was a false positive. This next one I have reviewed and it has been corrected. The next one I have reviewed and is noted issue, and so on. So that gives me the ability to turn this effectively into my working paper. At any point, I can then click on the generate report. You'll see it created a new tab at the bottom where it gave me the ability to look at the data in a printable format and gives me my table history in terms of who ran the analytic and when it was run. But of course, all my previous data is still there. And I can use other functions. So I could click on the sample button. If I wanted 100 sample, I could simply enter a sample of 100. I'm going to call it my 100 sample. And when I click OK, you'll see another tab appear at the bottom called 100 sample. And there, I've just performed a random sample. If I go back to my exceptions, if I click on the summarize tab, I'm able to summarize this data. Let's do it by the payee username. I want to include the vendor ID and the amount. And it'll automatically create effectively a pivot table for me where I can sort from high to low, or largest to smallest, excuse me, the wrong way around. And as we knew, Candace Cunning was responsible for 494 of those items, representing 56% of the total count and you can also see the sum of the payment amount, which represents 39% of the total value is, represent, is attributable to one individual. So in this Excel add-in, I'm able to work with my data in a very flexible way with an add-in that is designed with auditors in mind. But of course, at any point, all my existing and standard data was there as it was originally outputted by ACL as an exception list. So whether you as a user would like to work with it in Excel or you would prefer to work with it in a nice web view which you are then able to drill down and be able to analyze the data in a more visual fashion which potentially you might then want to put into an audit report, that's up to you. ACL gives you the choice of either. Off the base of the fact that you're already connected to the data running standardized analytics and all you as a user need to do is work with the results. And so this allows me to come and summarize and say that we see a world of yesterday and tomorrow very differently in an audit context. From a software perspective, you used to work with individual applications. You might have something like Barn Owl or Cura for risk management. ACL for your audit analytics, Teammate for your working paper tool, something like Tableau or ClickView for your reporting. In the future, you will have one solution for your risk, compliance, audit, and analytics requirements. Our goal is to ensure that you use ACL to achieve that. From a functional perspective, auditors used to work with samples and now work with 100% population tests. Auditors used to be provided access by IT and now have independent access to the data. And auditors used to need to be incredibly skilled in the function of data analytics, but now those analytics are pre-written, allowing the audit function to be able to spend more time remediating. And finally, the team, we find that we used to face lots of general auditors with similar skill sets. But now an audit team is made up of the right technology, a team that understands data in the organization, and field auditors who are going to work with their clients in the field to be able to achieve that. And to top it all off, we make external happy, excuse me, external audit happy along the way, because they can now rely on the internal controls of the organization. And in a number of cases, external audit have reduced their audit fees should an organization put ACL as a continuous auditing solution. 
And some external audit firms have said we won't trust the data that's being provided unless ACL has already extracted that. So in today's presentation, we've had the opportunity to look at what Alan's challenges were and why he was stuck as ad hoc auditing, how the right technology allows independence, overcomes the skills gap, and allows an organization to continually access and analyze their data, and the ability to work in the web view or in Excel allows the audit function to manage that data in any way that they choose. I'd like to thank you for being coming and joining us on this webinar. I hope it's been informative for you. We would welcome any questions you have, and I invite you to join our other upcoming webinars, the first of which is our audit management webinar, which allows you to be able to see, similar to other working paper tools, but in the cloud, and in a much more user-friendly fashion, exactly how to perform the audit management process. If you're not happy with your current audit management tool, if you have to pay for people to come on site and do upgrades and you're not getting local support, this is a must-see webinar. Another webinar will be in regards to continuous monitoring. So what happens when we've done the data analytics, but the business want to work with the data, where you can set conditions that in the event that something occurs, who do we notify, what frequency do we look, and can we go and ask control self-assessment questionnaires or survey the organization based on exceptions that have come out of the data? So the audit management and continuous monitoring webinars, you can find them on our webinars page. Come and get more webinars and learn with us how ACL's technology disrupts the continuous auditing, continuous monitoring, and the audit management world through disruptive technology. My name's Philip Tillman. It's been a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. We are always available to speak to you further and come and see you if there's more information you would like on this matter. Thank you and have a lovely day further.